Welcome back. And today we actually learn how to uh, use uh, one pre-constructed uh, convolutional neural network and teach this network some new things. In our case, like analyzing bacterial stains. Hi, Max. Right. So we want to adapt NICE model inception today toward the image data set, the model never seen before. Um, this is called transfer learning. And um, it's actually straightforward to do it. So first order, we load necessary packages. Um, they're the same as the, the package set we used last time. And this step is uh, unique compared to the last time. We need to define where the data are located because we have to retrain the model toward our our data set. So these are basically the folders where we have our images we want to teach um, this um, neural network. So um, maybe you can show us the folders and also explain how we have three different folders and how they are structured and also what's inside them. Yes, this is quite nice thing about Keras. You don't have to work on labeling preparation. You just need to place the data under the folder structure and then Keras infer um, the label information and also it learns, it trains the model based on this folder structure. And data is located under um, this direct data directory and you will see three directory, one for the training, one for the validation, and finally one for the, for the testing. And each directory, you will see two label border. And positive, you contain gram positive images. Negative folder, you contain negative gram positive. Mm. So NIC, so basically uh, what we want to uh, our convolutional neural network to do is then basically tell us, is this um, stain a uh, gram positive stain or a gram negative stain? All right. Right. So based on the folder structure, it infers the label information as well. So that's how you load the data. And it also shows that how many images are located in mm. each of the folder. All right. So um, now we loaded uh, the images. So what do we do now? So next order, we have to download Inception. Um, it's exactly the same except this finer argument. So this time we will not include the classifier because we want to retrain classifier toward our data set. Therefore, we set it as false. So we will not include the classifier. Okay, so the classifier you mean is the last fully connected layer. And in the previous case, so in the default version, there is this classifier layer with thousand different classes, but we actually do not need that. We just need a classifier that tells us if bacteria are gram positive and gram negative. So then we remove right. this classifier and we create our own classifier. Exactly. We have to have a classifier. So we have to reconstruct, reload model without classifier in this block, but we have to reconstruct the classifier with this statement. Um, so we load convolutional part, and then we add pulling layer, and then fully connected layer, and then finally prediction layer. And, and we are predicting the images based on two label instead of 1000s of natural images. So therefore, we also need to adjust this parameter number as two because we are doing binary classification. And then um, you prepare for the model and then you assign to the input images and to the model and then your transfer learn model is ready so now to get trained. We basically defined the architecture of the neural net and this is quite simple because everything stayed the same except uh, the last uh, few layers and exactly. um, now uh, we need to start training I assume. Exactly so the model is ready and next step how many layers you want to retrain. We don't want to train from the scratch because it will take a lot of time so we will keep the convolutional part as it is as we 
set trainable status force. We only train for the final layer and then that's how you set up. And uh, here are some couple of hyperparameter common setting for the training. Um, and then that's how you configure and it's ready to get retrained. All right. <clears throat> so how does the actual training work? Actual training, you um, simply assign this um, to, to this model, you assign training data set and validation data set with this epoch argument. Epoch is um, generation, how many generations you want to train the model. More the better, but at certain point, model is not able to learn anymore. It's saturated. Uh, this time we set it as 10 because we are it's going to be too busy if we train too much time, but commonly people train uh, 100 times of epoch and we already execute the job because it takes some time. All right, I see. <clears throat> and we also just train the final layer and this also helps us reduce the amount of time we actually need to wait for the training. Exactly. So And here yeah. you see the number loss is decreasing and accuracy is increasing. So this model is properly set and is able to learn new data set. All right, so that's the good news. So our model um, starts learning something and it's getting better with time. So can you also show that in a better manner maybe? Yes, uh, since it's too much number, you can visualize this result with Matplotlib library, and that's how you can plot it. So Kera support like history object, and you can plot it really nicely. And it's slowly learning accuracy, and loss is slowly decreasing, which is good sign. All right. So there are also two curves. Can you explain what the difference of these two curves are? Right. For the training, you need to use two data sets. One training data set, another one is validating data set, and uh, you are building model based on training and you are testing the model performance with validation data set internally. But uh, for the final testing, you have to use independent data set, mm. which we defined in the beginning, test data set, and that's what we are going to do. So basically, here. the validation data set is also part of the training. It's not used for actual training, but also test out if it's actually getting better. And therefore, it somehow also manipulates the model. So therefore, you need actually also a separate um, uh, data set, which the model has never seen. And this is then actually the test data set. Exactly. So during the training, you are backpropagating based on this validation testing result. All right. And testing real actual model validation evaluation, you need to use testing data set, which was never used for the training. Okay, great. And now uh, we actually learn how good our model is. Mm -hmm. And the result is quite surprisingly good, 88%. For such a small data set mm. and such a small amount of time training time, and we made quite a good accuracy. Okay, so um, of course this was only a test, and therefore um, we uh, tried to keep it really simple. So if you want to get a better model, what are things you could adjust to get higher accuracies? Uh, well, in a nutshell, Either you increase the epoch number from 10 to 100. Uh, second try, you can add more data so model can be more generalized and then also learn um, some images never seen before, can be familiar. So I would suggest two things. Does it also make sense to uh, retrain certain things in the actual convolutional part of the neural network? It is. It um, does. And third approach, you can play with hyperparameter setting. Either you change the learning rate, that's important. Um, either you change batch size. That's also very important. Third, you play with freezing, unfreezing layers of convolutional part. And those three, I suggest you to play with. Okay, so I take away from that, there are a lot of different parameters to play. And if you really want to get a good model, it makes sense to try all the approaches. Right, but there are some important hyperparameters, as I mentioned, three things. 
rest, it uh, doesn't really uh, give big impact on the result. All right. Thanks a lot for explaining.